Hello and welcome to the Raw Preview. I'm Michael Sidgwick, joined by Benjamin Richardson and Andy Murray to preview the events of tonight's Monday Night Raw. But before we get into it, if you're a fan of this sort of thing, make sure to subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. We preview and review Raw, SmackDown, and the Wednesday Night War and pay-per-views. We hold wrestler interviews, roundtable discussions, and a roundup of the week complete with a bloody good quiz, of course, on wrestle culture. Now, gents, can WWE serve up a second good episode of Raw? Whatever. Uh, oh, in a row. Well, in a row, because yeah, that's, that's usually beyond them. What do you think? <sighs> when was the last time we did it? Um, I'm going to say it's... I'm going to say it's impossible to say at this stage because we barely have any idea of what's actually going to be on Raw. And what has been previewed for Raw already sounds a little bit ridiculous, which isn't to say it won't be good. No, it'll be better for it. Uh, well, it'll be better for me personally, but it won't make it objectively <laughs> good. Well, people need to get on board with the, hi- the idea that it's way better when it's perversely entertaining. You're yes. on this bus. Hey, yep. that's me, baby. That's me. Yeah, I mean, last last week's show was actually quite a bit of a personal disappointment to me because it was earnestly very good. <laughs> um, I prefer it when it's just an absolute catastrophe. Well, did you, en- did you enjoy Starkid? Uh, I didn't watch Starkid. Because Benjamin. we'll be getting some fallout from that, which will be, we'll have to do quite a lot of gymnastics to explain why certain things are occurring. Alternatively, they could just do no explanation whatsoever. Ignore it completely. As they are wont to do. (laughs) Now, before this podcast, just to reveal a little bit of what goes on in the inner sanctum, myself and Benjamin Richardson did an actual bit of research before this podcast. Journalists. Indeed. Benjamin Richardson took umbrage with a bit of phrasing on the part of WWE.com. I'm inclined to agree. They say something to the effect on their website as we speak. Can Seth Rollins extinguish the bridge he's burned. (laughs) Now, why is this hilarious? This is hilarious because once a bridge is burnt down, it's beyond the point of saving. Secondly, if anything, he would fix, he'd repair the bridge because he was once known as the architect who was so desperate to get his stupid catchphrase in there that they've made it illogical. It's already going to be a silly thing to begin with. Just for anyone who doesn't know, the point of this segment is he delivered that town hall speech last week in which he criticised all of his colleagues for letting the site of the raw side down. I presume he included himself so and now he's going to apologize for doing that this week and then next week who knows maybe he'll apologize for his apology i don't know where this goes it's a bizarre thing what i love about this is he's going to extinguish the bridge which yes. to me indicates the bridge was still ablaze mm-hmm. and he's just it's still burnt down still burnt down he's just gonna extinguish the fire and that's it he's gonna stop burning bridges this week it's but just the it's just the oddest bit of phrase and i get it he <laughs> burns things down <laughs> yes. so they need to get an extinguish in there But at the same time, so what I'm getting from this preview is that he's just going to stop putting his foot in it, which seems impossible looking at his Twitter activity. It seems impossible. If he wants to stop putting his foot in it, he needs to stop opening his mouth, in which case don't advertise an apology a week in advance. Just just do it privately behind the curtain. In character and storyline, how do you expect this apology to play out? Ah, gee whiz. I I, I think it's going to be the most WWE segment of all time. (laughs) I think it's going to be very... He's going to come out and go, for about two minutes. And then like uh, Kevin Owens or whoever they decide he's going to be feuding with for the foreseeable future, I guess, on the back of last week, it is Owens, is going to come out and go, and it looks like they're going to do a handshake, but oh no, AOP are here. Here's a beat down because... You can tell every beat of every WWE segment by the headline of the preview on the website. In this case, it's extinguishing a bridge, <laughs> which is something else. Uh, as a slight aside, actually, one of my favorite things to do shortly after a WWE show is to go on WWE.com forward slash photos and look at how they've titled some of the things. It's always Johnny Battles Sid in a pulse pounding affair or Stevie Battles Frankie and boy, your heart's going to be racing in this one. Rey Mysterio at um, uh, uh, Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series. Quite a heated match, quite a well-built affair, family involved in all this stuff. It wasn't a war or brutal or any of this. It was, it's a family affair because <laughs> Dominic's here. Whoever runs WWE website whoever titles their content is a a moron it's a clown car of combat that's how (laughs) i would have described it (laughs) that's very good very good indeed what i think is going to go down here is it's going to be a sort of typical Corey graves i'm sorry if you were offended but the fact remains that i can burn it down and you guys can't and it's going to further a sort of insincere heel character um, just because they're so spiteful as well, they almost certainly will repeat the verbiage of Corey Graves in this apology. Yeah. And they'll think it's hilarious. And they'll think it's, oh, yeah. oh, what a funny little in-joke. On the subject of commentary, incidentally, um, Samoa Joe 
is filling for Dio Martin this week. Again? Yeah, yes. After last week's cameo. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know what? Brian Alvarez um, and Dave Meltzer expressed their just complete contempt for this development purely because, one, it's going to deprive us of uh, some more Joe being in the ring yep. if he gets that good again. And two, if he actually gets good, that isn't happening because he will get bad because all WWE commentators get bad. Everyone used to like Corey Graves, and now everyone thinks he's a complete dickhead. Moving on to point number two, strange match. <laughs> now, I was going to say booked. I will instead say penciled in because we are hours away from showtime and minutes into the show, the script often gets rewritten. Yeah. But penciled in as we speak is an odd match between Charlotte Flair and the Kabuki Warriors in a handicap match. Now, this is odd. The build for it last week was Charlotte Flair wrestled Asuka in a singles match. And apropos of nothing, even though she's a heel, she did very little wrong to distract her. She didn't distract her at all. Charlotte Flair just directed some of her rage towards Kyrie Sane, who did absolutely nothing. This is somehow manifested in a handicap match scenario, which seems like if this were all real, not that they have any consideration for that, it's a dangerous position to put Charlotte Flair. What time does Becky Lynch get in the ring is what I want to know. Yeah, it's a fair question. Also, what's Charlotte thinking? Last week, she actually lost that match, courtesy of a green mist. Of the distraction, so now she thinks she has a better chance taking on both of them this week. Yeah, just a night removed or two nights removed from losing in a tag match at Starcade as well, which the Kabuki Warriors are also one that fatal for her. Doesn't make much sense. No, I don't. Yeah. What, what what will we learn from this other than that either the Kabuki Warriors together can't beat Charlotte, or that they'll just beat her again? <laughs> I don't know what, which we which we which we would expect. You know what the good thing about this is? I don't think anyone really watched Starcade. No, probably not. But the point still stands from yeah. last week. Yeah. What yeah. do you think is going to go it, down? This, uh, the, what will happen is the match will play out inexplicably for about 12, 13 minutes. Um, Charlotte will be in the ascendancy for huge, huge portions because that's what they, that's how they book her, particularly when she's a baby face, which is odd. Um, yeah, it'll go on far too long before Becky Lynch eventually comes down when really Becky Lynch should come down after, I don't know, five seconds of the bell ringing, maybe? That would be realistic. That would be good. Speaking of realistic, <laughs> is the inevitable appearance of Becky Lynch in any way realistic? Because they haven't really made friends at all. They've just kind of been inexplicably flung together in tag team scenarios under the pretext that they've had a rivalry in recent months and years. Nevertheless, she's still a baby first and she hates injustice. All baby first is law of injustice. She just like likes to fight. That's all she, she talks about. I've never heard her, Benjamin. I've never heard her say no, the word in, injustice it's in, once. It's implicit in all WWE baby faces. Famously rich in subtext, WWE yeah. is telling <laughs> us that her <laughs> profound sense of injustice yeah. and wishing to wrong it is Kevin Owens implicit. has had the same storyline for the past year. He's a prize fighter, yet he hates the injustice going on in WWE. He hates that the likes of Noah Jose aren't being... And, and, um, yeah, he's actually Andrade said it. Aren't being put, he has actually said it, but I think... I don't know, if, if, given their baby faces tend to ha- like just present the most broad tropes possible, I think we can assume this of all of them. I can't. Do you know why? Because they never save each other when they're getting their dicks put in the dirt. They just That's, get their yeah. dicks pounded in the dirt... <laughs> multi-man heel beatdowns and then no one really comes yeah. to rescue them. And, it'll, and when they do come to rescue, it'll take the 12 minutes uh, as I've just been through. It's matches like this and the way they've come together that make me really annoyed when people say, oh, don't be negative. Well, no, crap like this deserves negativity. It's just really poorly put together. It's going to be a crap match because it'll follow the same goddamn layout as every single WWE handicap match ever. Charlotte Flair probably my favorite woman's wrestler in WWE, crap babyface, like not good at it at all. Uh, she won't elicit any sympathy whatsoever against Asuka and Kyrie Sane, who are still very popular despite being heels, yes. um, and, and as, at least by a certain also core of the audience. Also, like, to what extent is Charlotte even a babyface? She was a heel right. for s- select periods of Survivor Series weekend. It's, by default. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, goldfish bowl nonsense. I hate it. Her work as a babyface is very wonky because she just never projects herself as a figure of sympathy. She's an asshole. She's never... She's a, I know. She is but that's what's so good about that <laughs> as a heel. At what stage in Charlotte's career do we, has he ever been in any real peril? Almost none. And certainly not in the in, in, in the microcosm of a match. So what we're saying is this is probably going to be rubbish. Yeah, it's going to stink. Um, no, I can't say that for certain. Theoret- we can. <laughs> Theoretically, the Kubrick Warriors could, could put on a, a good heel beat down on Charlotte and try and get something out of it, it could, it could be okay. I just don't understand it. I, I think the outcome of it is going to be rubbish. I just don't understand what is going to compel Becky Lynch to help out a person who she's been filmed backstage 
like staring a hole through yeah. because of the contempt, the residual contempt from when they feuded and they've never really got back together. It's just nonsense for me. I yeah. wish it would get explained tonight. Paul Heyman, you are our only hope. Forget about the cooks. Actually, no, speaking of cooks, right? <laughs> Don't forget about the cooks. Here's an interesting development <laughs> that happened on Starcade. Oh, this is, I'm really looking forward to this, whatever happens tonight on this, in this uh, angle. Right, this is very, very odd for me. <laughs> Starcade is a way to con people into coming along to a house show. Yeah. The it's, me it's Sorry, it's, just on, it's basically also a network advertisement for a house show. Yes. So it's a network advertisement for a house show. It is there. It functions to try and get people to come to other house shows. Here's a sort of more fun, extemporaneous action you don't see on TV. Come along, spend your money. It's Starcade. Hey. It won't be called anything. It'll be called WWE Live in your town. But for here, it's Starcade. Now... They advertise the fact that they like to falsely advertise and give you a nice gimmick match between a feud that, in spite of itself, has got over. They bait and switched on this match, didn't give you it, and televised it as an advert. So my question to you, Benjamin, firstly, is are they going to actually give us the last man standing match? And how do they get out of the restraining order? And well, why does my life make thing. no sense? <laughs> I, I knew something wasn't quite right with this Starcade match to begin with when it was announced as the last man standing match. Not traditionally a feud opening ma uh, stipulation. So I was already thinking, how are they going to get out of that? And the answer is, just don't do it, which isn't an ideal solution. That's Secondly, what they did. Yeah, that's what they did. Uh, anyone who doesn't know, um, Lana came out. She said, I'm thankful. I'm really looking forward to Christmas because I've got a hot, sexy boyfriend or whatever. He's, he's a big hunk of meat. And, um, big hunk of cock is the subtext <laughs> that you're famously... It's implicit that he's got a gigantic cock. Yes, won't get into the reasons. He is that. the dominator. Uh, but she said, unfortunately, this match can't happen because Rusev's got a restraining order. He can't be in the arena. Why was it booked? Why was it booked? Good question. Uh, Kevin Owens wasn't bothered by that. He said, you can't send home fans like that. He's quite right. The injustice there, you see, he's fighting <laughs> against it. And they had a match. Now, what happened in that match? That ended in a DQ because Rusev <laughs> came down. So he was there all along, and he's quite happy to get his hands on Bobby Lashley, but he's not. he can't do it in a professional capacity. Isn't he still in jail? Well, theoretically, no, he's, he, he's breached the terms of the, um, the restraining order. He should either be back in jail or otherwise, you know, like the sh he should be thinking now more than ever, I can't do anything more because it's going to cost me an awful lot of money or even like some of my time. How you um, string the storyline out on Raw, given that <laughs> particular convoluted twist in it, I'm, I'm not sure. He'll be there tonight, and they'll just pretend Starcade didn't happen. Well, I admire your earnest attempt to deconstruct this storyline yeah. and give us an idea of how WWE could essentially get themselves out of this. Andy Murray deals well with flippancy, so Murray, say something stupid. Uh, yeah, restraining order. What um, I will say... Sorry, I just Paul sorry. Herman has mentioned his legal capacities in recent weeks. He did on SmackDown about a month back when Brock Lesnar was going to be uh, encountering legal issues with turn up. So he can possibly sort something out just for tonight's episode behind the scenes. That, that's an explanation. That's, that's something I'm really grasping. Murray, some explanation. say something stupid. What daft, <laughs> what daft load of crap is going to happen on Raw tonight as it pertains to the storyline? See, the thing, I think this... Uh, I'm going to disappoint you here, Michael Sajuk, because I think last week was actually an attempt at moving away from the daft load of crap. I know Rusev did a stupid face, and like that was quite funny at the end of the segment when he beat up Bobby last year, but it was actually a pretty good heat yeah, beat down. It, it, disappointingly, like, it was actually yeah, decent. It was disappointingly good. I want this story <laughs> to be the worst sack of crap ever, because I've enjoyed it immensely since it came through since it was funny i think this week we're just going to get some another heated beat down from rusev because bobo took a bit of a pasting again last night he was all strapped up before the mat before the match and all this stuff i think it's just gonna be the same again i think it's gonna be really boring i think lana will cut a whiny little promo bobo will be there maybe they'll be in a studio away from the arena we're not here for our own safety all this stuff and rusev will find them like he did in that restaurant inexplicably a few weeks ago so we're gonna get some kind of chair or table based assault on Rusev's part to Bobby Lashley, culminating at TLC in a certain on-brand stipulation. Just ask a question here. Um, if you're Bobby Lashley, do you want Rusev to offer a strain order? Do you want to get your hands on him and beat the crap out of him? If, if you're Bobby Lashley, you're putting up with an awful lot of nonsense yeah. and subterfuge <laughs> just to get your hold. Just to because the at the point. end of the day, yeah. all you want to do... It, in the capacity of hot, sexy boyfriend, is have lots of hot, sexy sex with Lana. You probably didn't sign up to be this much of a jerk. Right, to... so have the match. Get out of the way. Don't be wrapped up in legal wranglings months and months on end. I think she's more upset with Rusev than she is in love with Bobby Lashley. 
Mm. I could not care less. <laughs> Moving on to... Right, I've been typically on brand cynical. Raw's probably going to be crap. You know what wasn't crap last week? In fact, it was actually exhilarating, yeah, euphoric right. and awesome and heartwarming. All of those things. It was Rey Mysterio's entire night. He was phenomenal in the ring against AJ Styles. And a really fun match. Like, mm -hmm. not your total like, match of the air contender ripper, but he knows exactly how to construct and engineer like a really like fun, euphoric He's the baby best. face win. I was going to say he's the best baby face in the company. Other than Daniel Bryan. Y yeah. Has the potential to be. I don't think they've refined or ironed anything out like that. What I'm getting at now is what next for Rey Mysterio? Uh, maybe a revisit of the Andrade deal? Because um, they've been booking him strong, in fairness. Yeah. Yeah, I can't see that happening immediately. I think it's more likely he's going to exchange a few matches with AJ Styles just to you know get out, out of the system. But I think he probably will move on to Andrade. And they were supposed to wrestle uh, WrestleMania this year, weren't they? It was, it was meant to be hair versus mask. It wasn't yeah. meant to be. They never advertised it, but they apparently had it penciled in. I can see them maybe saving that for somewhere more important than TLC, which is already laden with stipulations. And obviously this hair versus mask stipulation it doesn't quite fit. They could use the stairs to cut his hair off. Maybe the... Yeah, the, or they could have a barbershop chair. Like a razor underneath the first set of stairs and then lop. Yeah. What next for Rey Mysterio? <laughs> try and help me beat Ernest Murray. You're, yep. try, you're trying to Murray book a, 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 an honestly good program here. I don't like it. Um, yeah, no, I think they'll do something along the lines. I mean, they'll do another AJ match. They will. Mm -hmm. It's WWE. And I don't have any complaints. No, the quality of the first whatsoever. one was really good. Um, I think they'll do a little fill-in defense first, though. And I think the perfect way to set up uh, an AJ rematch is to have Ray defend the belt against Umberto Carrillo, who was due a shot but didn't get a shot. And then Ray ended up winning the belt and all that stuff. I could see Ray going, hey, buddy, you know, you were supposed to have a shot. Come face me. Nice sporting contest. Out come the OC. Maybe a stupid triple threat comes to that. Maybe a singles match. I think that's the direction. I would love to see that because they've kind of done Humberto Carrillo dirty, realistically. Yep. He's been introduced to the audience without any semblance of character work. He's been... We've been told that he's a contender. And yet he lose, he's lost most of his matches. Yeah. And why? Well, the thing is, you lose this one as well. That's my only issue with that, unless you get the OC interruption. But my deal is, with this, I think an audience, even a jaded audience like WWE's base, realises the worth of a proper banger of a singles match, yeah. and that can carry people's momentum forward for ages. Like, people were still unwilling to give up on, for example, Buddy Murphy yeah. after his uh, series with um, age, uh, sorry, Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns in the summer. He still got some concerns currency as a guy who people want to see pushed maybe a ray versus Carrillo banger and they would surely have exceptional chemistry together it'll be, be great could be great i'm grasping straws to save Carrillo, but it seems like a flush already moving on to my final point i could consider one of the more like <laughs> gripping or newsworthy <laughs> storyline <laughs> developments as it pertains to i don't know Brock Lesnar, but I've been told he's done. So without even thinking about him, while we find out what's in Eric Rowan's box once and for all, I'm getting sick of this. You, I'm getting you, sick of the noise. You're getting sick of the grown man, six foot seven, three hundred odd pounds, going a goo goo a boo boo into a bit of chicken wire uh, in front of a camera. Are you telling me that's ridiculous, could Michael? It, could Sidgwick? it be a baby chicken? <laughs> That's just what we're here so. to discuss. So, for so. some reason, with Eric Rowan, every time they try and put, put him on a singles run, they can't do it without giving him some cube, cube, cubular prop. I think that's necessary. That's necessary for him to get over as a single star. Square Remember? peg, round hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just completely no sold that I joke. Does that every day? Does that to me every single day? <laughs> it's a little grape plant. What the grapes? What's the grape plant the, called? Corona vine. There we go. Grape it's a, vine. It's where you get your rims vine. from. It's a little vine. What this is actually is a very smart callback to his days as a vintner. Vintner. <laughs> is this when he was in the, the Yidian Savant when he was doing this the Rubik's the one. Cubes? Yeah. It was, he, it, he was absolutely phenomenal at everything except, yes, his, except, <laughs> except, except his chosen profession. <laughs> he could solve a Rubik's Cube like that. He could make like award-winning wine. He could play beautiful classical guitar, if I recall correctly, and he was just <laughs> crap at wrestling. Rest in peace, Eric Rowan. You just like, buried six feet deep. Right, I am going to challenge you both. Quick test. Within three seconds, what's in the box? Uh, Fines. <laughs> Grips. <laughs> You've completely buried him there. <laughs> You've completely and utterly buried him there. I'm putting him on the spot. What's in the box? Baby Yoda. Name <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Can you imagine? It might actually get him over. Oh, well, no, it's WWE, so they'll have Baby Yoda on Raw in about five years. He might be one of the people who bought the Bray Wyatt belt. I reckon if they had Baby Yoda 
<laughs> in a baby face role in WWE after like three or four weeks. Everyone goes, he's not even bloody cute. Yeah. <laughs> he's really unlikable. Why is he going 50 50 against Dana Brooke? <laughs> he's got Jedi powers. In fact, he's very cringe as well. That's what they would do to Baby Yoda. That's a good question. Which, they would turn which, Richard Attenborough heel. Yeah, which Star Wars characters would do David Attenborough is the best one, isn't he? Yeah, I think he's the one person in life that we're allowed to still admire yeah. anywhere. Cancelled at Christmas looking at the, uh, the accelerated pace of our demise. Goldblum, yeah. Grabber, Stan, they've all been cancelled. All of them. David Jason, that's uh, Michael Hamlet's white whale. I'm not keen on David Jason, to be perfectly honest. He's a ben, ben Ray, our friend Ben Ray, loves David Jason. You can't say yeah. mood about him in his ears. Yeah, but he likes Ted DiBiase Jr. Yeah. <laughs> so we can't really say his much more. wrestlers, Randy Orton. <laughs> did Ted DiBiase Jr. ever fall through an open bar? I don't think he did. Uh, in a comedic fashion? No, he did uh. nothing in a comedic he fashion. He seems the type, though, does he not? Yeah, not. Uh, yeah. He never seemed like that much of a meme figure of fun during his career, but Cody's completely buried that perception <laughs> of him. He's trying to, oh, my. So that was fantastic. I reckon on that basis, precisely the kind of guy who would fall through the bar. So what we're seeing is Ted, Di Ted DiBiase Jr. is in Eric Rowan's box. Yes. Good. Fantastic. Yes. Right. That is the one visual that I cannot get past at this point. So <laughs> this podcast is going to get brought to an abrupt halt. If you like this sort of thing, make sure to subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us all on Twitter, at Benjamin Richardson. It's B-A-R 3 foot. Andy Murray. Andy, at Andy H. Murray. The H stands for hypnotic. <sighs> you can follow all of us at What Culture WWE. You can follow me at M. Sidgwick. Thanks very much for your time. We will always appreciate it. We will see you soon.